Hi guys and girls from the Cloud Tech community, I'm Brad Nelson of Nelson Hilliard and here are a few tech news highlights from this week in the world of cloud computing and IoT. I'd like to thank you all for your tweets and retweets and support and likes from last week's video news. Please remember to like, subscribe, comment and share this video with your friends and your colleagues. This week saw Microsoft acquired Cycle Computing to bolster its high performance computing on Azure. Microsoft announced the acquisition of the Connecticut-based Cycle Computing to help provide easier access to high-performance computing in Azure. Cycle has been in business since 2005 and provides orchestration software running both off the primary public cloud providers as well as in the private cloud environments. According to the company, its products will manage 1 billion core hours this year, growing 2.7 times every 12 months, and will help companies who spend up to 100 million annually on cloud infrastructure. Cycle Computing CEO Jason Stowe wrote in a blog post, we see amazing opportunities in joining forces with Microsoft. Its global cloud footprint and unique high cloud offering is built, is built with enterprises in mind and its big compute HPC team has already delivered pivotal technologies such as InfiniBand and next generation GPUs. The Cycle team can't wait to combine Cycle Cloud's technology for managing Linux and Windows compute and data workloads with Microsoft Azure's big compute infrastructure roadmap and global market reach. For Microsoft, the move fits in with its pushes towards artificial intelligence and the Internet of Things and deep learning, of which it says it has explosive growth on Azure. This week saw the Australian government start to invest in the IoT networker Thinkstra. The Australian government is investing 10 million Australian dollars for a 15% stake in the IoT network company Thinkstra. It's doing that to help scale up its Sigfox low powered wide area network or LPWAN technology which is designed to connect the Internet of Things devices. Thinkstra was 42% owned by New Zealand listed company Racon, but will be reduced to 23% after its current capital raising is complete. The technology provides businesses with a low cost solution to track and monitor equipment such as large volumes of pallets, waste containers, gas canisters, farm gates and livestock. Thinkstra is aiming to connect 17 million objects by 2022 and is on track to provide a network that covers 95% of Australia's population by the end of the year. More than 150 businesses have already started using Thinkstra's network. This week there was a major incident for Fujitsu at their Sydney data centre. Some of Fujitsu's local data centre customers likely ran into a bit of trouble late on the 19th of August, with one of the company's Sydney sites suffering an outage that lasted for several hours. A spokesman said, We are treating this matter as a major incident and we have activated our internal crisis management processes. The data centre disruption comes as the company pumps $100 million into a new strategy aimed at upgrading this strategic data centre facilities to accommodate the present and the future needs of its enterprise customers. VMware's AirWatch subsidiary is joining with Google to enable enterprise-wide management of all Chrome devices via a single cloud portal. IT admins will be able to manage Chrome devices in their company alongside all other endpoints from a single console through VMware Workspace One's cloud portal. VMware said, with all new enterprise-ready capabilities from Chrome Enterprise license, companies will also be able to control device policies using a customizable assignment of groups based on geography, device platform, department, and employee role. The goal is to simplify policy enforcement across an enterprise. One of the world's most popular cryptocurrency wallets can now hold Erythium in blockchain. Erythium's token price is up almost 4,000% for this year and has now been added to blockchain.info, one of the oldest and most popular user-controlled Bitcoin wallets. This gives the 16 million blockchain wallets access to the second highest market cap coin, which is used to power smart contracts on Erythium platform. Peter Smith, Blockchain's chief executive said, The reason why we decided to add Erythium is we really like Erythium as a community ecosystem and the technology has really matured. This week saw a Chinese first 
as Alibaba deploys blockchain to secure health data. Alibaba is partnering with Chinese authorities to launch the country's first application of blockchain technology in the medical sector. Taking place in the city of Shangzhou, Ali Health will work with local government to use blockchain to secure data in a pioneering approach. Full details of the scheme are still forthcoming, but will involve creation of a number of data security nets and storage of data in ciphertext with strict access controls and operational privileges. This week saw nearly 2 million Chicago voters exposed on an Amazon server. Personal information including names, addresses and dates of birth for 1.8 million registered voters in Chicago was publicly exposed online on an Amazon cloud computing server. A database manager and equipment contractor at Election Systems and Software said the data was a backup file stored on Amazon Web Services servers and included partial security numbers or social security numbers and some driver's license numbers and state identification numbers. Amazon provides the online service but the, secu the, the, security <laughs> but the security configurations are determined by the user. Amazon's cloud is by default programmed to be secure, so someone within ES and S must have changed the settings to public. Electronic Systems and Software in a statement said, it would review its procedures and protocols to ensure that its systems and data are secure in order to prevent similar situations from happening again. This week saw PaySkill reveal a huge and rather alarming gender pay gap in cloud computing between men and women. Women will be earning less than half of what a man could earn, and in some cases, according to PaySkill's report on the highest paying cloud computing jobs in 2017. The highest paying salaries on average are the enterprise architect, coming in at over $138,000, Senior Solution Architects come in at just over $132,000 and Solution Architects at $122,500. Unfortunately, there are noticeable pay divides across the different sections. In terms of bonuses, men on average will see bonuses of around $12,500 and women will see bonuses of around $9,500. The median hourly rates see women earning just below $22 an hour and men more than double that at over $53 an hour. When it comes to getting more women into STEM or science, technology, engineering and mathematics, we must rethink everything. The median salary doesn't look very pretty either, with men seeing salaries just over 119000 and women much less at 101000 Women also suffer lower commissions, with the median commission for men at just over $35,000 whereas women could expect to see less than half of that at just $15,000. Payscale reports rely on crowdsourcing, advanced analytics and big data to drive prediction models that are transforming compensation into a data-driven science. I'm Brad Nelson of Nelson Hilliard. Thanks for watching this week's cloud computing and IoT news highlights. And please remember to like, subscribe, comment and share this video with your friends and colleagues and also connect with us or connect with me on LinkedIn at Brad Nelson and also you can connect with us on Twitter which is at Nelson underscore Hilliard. Until next week, be good, be safe and keep our clouds secure.